The Lord sent us out here to tell y'all, to warn y'all about the destruction to come. He sent us out here to tell y'all to repent, come back to the laws of God. Because what we've been doing hasn't been working. Right. The way we've been living, the people and the philosophies we've been following has not been working. Right. Selling drugs to your brother has not been working. Shooting your brother has not been working. Knocking up your sister and leaving her with a kid has not been working. Right. So what are we going to do now? We come back to the laws of God. Read that again. What's your question? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And my sister, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's what Jesus Christ said, all right? right. What we come out here to teach is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to wake up because you are God's chosen people. That's right. All right? Let me ask you this, sis. What would your father be according to that sign? Show that thing on the back. Show that thing on the back. What would your father do? Yeah, All right, now give me um, Deuteronomy 76. Yes, Let me go through this history real quick and catch her up. American black. American black. So your father would be from the tribe of Judah, which makes you from the tribe of Judah. Give me um, I'm going to let you know that right now. The Lord Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, That's is right. from the tribe of Judah. All right, go ahead and read that. This is the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7 and verse 14. Bring it out. For it is evident that our Lord spring. Hey, sis, 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 sis. Check this out. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So, sis, Jesus Christ was our Lord. He's our Lord and Savior, right? He came from the house of Judah. And you just said that you descend from that. That means you are a direct relative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The black Messiah. That's right. You know that he's a black man? Good, good. Let me ask you this, sis. Uh, you in school? Did they teach you about slavery? Growing up? What did they teach you about it? What did they say? Give me some information. What did, what did they tell you? Let me know the history of your people in this land. I can't think of nothing to talk about. Here, and, and see, it's okay. I'm going to let you know this right now. We all grew up in the school system, the white man's school system. They don't teach us about our history. Right. The only thing that we know about our history in school is that we came off of ships. We didn't have any clothes. We didn't know how to speak. We was butt naked. We were slaves. That's our history according to the white man. Right. But you know, this Bible shows you your history way before slavery. Right. Deuteronomy 76. I'm going to show you your history, all right? This is what God said about your people. This is why you're special. You said to have your head up because you're better than every other nation according to God. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord God said our people, the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, are a holy people. Now, sis, holy means to be separate and set apart. Now, do you have a favorite pair of shoes or a favorite outfit or something that you have that's special to you? And you put that aside from everything else, right? You hold that thing near and dear to you. God made 18 nations. He has one nation which you descend from. He said that's special to him. That's holy, all right? That means that you're different from everybody else. Go ahead. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Now, sis, check this part out right here. This is very important because in Christianity, they teach opposite. Go ahead. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God just told you that you're above every other nation on this earth. Right. The man that owns that store, God says that you're above him. The school system that you go to, your teachers, most well, not, I don't know about your teachers, but the school system that, that implements these, these, uh, these teachings, you're above them. All these other nations, God holds you above them. There's no such thing as equality. All right? Give me Revelation 1. I'm going to show you something else. Now, who is this right here, sis? Look at this sign. Who is this? Hey, sis with the pink, come over here and learn about your history, my, my sister. Come over here, sis. Hey, we're your brothers. Come over here. Yeah, give him a fly. It says, who is this right here? You say it's Jesus? Do you believe that? All right, see, look. And I'm going to show you something. Because I was taught in Christianity in church that that was Jesus Christ. But look, look what we're reading. Reading the Holy Bible. We're going to give you the description of Jesus Christ out the Bible. Go ahead. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says Jesus Christ, his head, his head and his hairs and his beard were white like wool. Now what color was his beard and his hair? And what was the texture? You just said it. Wool. So Christ has woolly textured hair. Now let me ask you this, sis. What texture hair do you have? 
Feel it. What texture is that? That's woolly textured hair. That's, That's right. right. You wasn't taught that in school. We was taught that our hair was disgusting and nappy, right? And it's hard to control, but Jesus Christ has the same hair. Teach. Woolly hair is what you have. You ever you ever seen a sheep? You ever, you ever, a lot of us don't go to zoos. We ain't ever, a lot of people didn't get to go to zoos, but I, you ever get to pet a sheep? Had the same texture as your hair. Christ had the same exact texture as your hair. Let's go. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. All right, so somebody saw, the, the John saw Jesus Christ's feet in his vision, right? Go ahead. Like unto fine brass. Now, what color is, Jesus, is, uh, is brass? What color is brass? You ever been in a band? Mm -hmm. Seen the trumpet? What color is that? It's like a goldish brown color. The goldish brown. There you go. There you go. Sis. Now, check this out. It said his feet were like brass. That's the color, right? Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. Hey, brother, come over here. It said you take that brass. Since you take that brass and you burn it, what color is that brass going to be? Anything you burn, what color is it going to be? Black, very dark. Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man according to the Bible. Right. This is stuff that we're not being taught. We're being taught this, right? But that's not in the Bible. My brother, my brother right here doing great. Yeah, it could go on YouTube. Yeah. My brother, we're teaching uh, the, the image of Jesus Christ in the Bible. When I told the sister this now, we was all taught that Jesus Christ was like this, right? But we just read out the Bible that his description does not fit that. Read that part again. 15, 15. And his feet. It says Jesus Christ's feet. Like unto fine brass. And my brother, we just established that brass is a brown color, right? Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man according to the Bible. Right, These right. are things. What's funny, bro? Okay, okay. All right, look, my sister. Now you know that Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man just like you. What do we have to do? What else do we not know? Go to Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you your history because the, they didn't teach you your history in the, in the, in the school system. They just taught you a little bit that you was a slave and that's it. That you made it, you made some peanut butter and that was it. We're going to teach you more today. Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting verse 1. We're going to show you who you are according to the Bible. Right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. It and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Simply put, God said to our people, if we keep his commandments, if we do what he says, because he's our father, what's going to happen? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God said if we kept his commandments, he's going to put us on top of every other nation. That's what he said. He didn't say equal to, like we're taught in this world today. Right. He said we're going to be above all nations. All right. Now, what happens if we don't keep his commandments? Sis, you, you got any parents, right? You got parents? One parent. If you broke that rule, what happens to you? If you did something that you weren't supposed to do, what happens? You get in trouble, right? Read this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day. Simply put, if we do not listen to our Father, if we disobey our Father, what's going to happen? That all these curses, all these what? Curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said we're going to be a cursed people. Sister, so you paying attention? You okay? You taking it in real quick? What's going to happen if we don't listen to our Father? What did you say? If you obey, then you will have consequences. You said what? If you obey, then you will have consequences. Consequences. Since you want to be here? Oh, good, 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 good. Just making sure. All right, go to verse 32. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. In verse 32. Now we're going to show you some curses to identify who you are. We're going to show you what happened to your ancestors and some things that's happening to you right now. Okay? To let you know that you are an Israelite according to the Bible. You're not an African American. There's no such thing as an African American in this Bible. Right. No such thing as a, a Negro or a five percenter in this Bible. Right. Go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says our sons and our daughters will be given unto another people. All right, go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. He said, your children will be taken away from you, sis. Your children. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. There's no way we can get our children back. Give me verse 46. All right. Verse 48. That's right. Yes, sir. Read it. Verse hey, my brother, check this out. 
Hey, bro. Step up real quick, man. What's your name? Huh? Raka. 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 All right, good. Hey, you man, speak up, man. Just speak boldly, man. You my, you my brother. Speak boldly. Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. It says our people will have to serve our enemies. So according to the Bible, you have enemies on this earth. Right. Everybody's not your friend. We're going to see who your enemy is. Go ahead. Which the Lord thy God shall send against thee. Now remember, the Lord sent these enemies against us because we continue to break his commandments. Hey, my brother, my brother. Check this out, man. Pay attention. It's very important. All right. Read that part again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord thy God shall send against thee. It says you're going to serve your enemies in this land, okay? Go ahead. In hunger. In hunger. And every place you go to get your food, you had to get it from your enemy. Right. Who owns this door right here, sis? Who owns that store, bro? Who owns that store? Who owns it? India's, right? Who owns Walmart? McDonald's. All these places. You don't go to your people to get this. Just to go to what God says your enemies. Go ahead. And then thirst. And then thirst. Hey, my sisters, good to see y'all. Let me ask y'all this. Does Jesus Christ love everybody? Yes. You say yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Let me ask you this. What color is Jesus Christ? Black. You know that. Black. So if Jesus Christ loves everybody, why does he look like everybody? Ah. Manipulation by the masses. Say by who? Manipulation by the masses. Manipulation by the masses. So if Jesus Christ loved everybody, why did he make everybody that look to look like him? Why is that? Wake up. Right? Let me help you out. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, and we're going to roll to Amos 3 after that. No, we'll go to Joel 2 after that. Then Amos. We're going to show y'all something. Y'all stay here because you're going to learn some black history today, okay? You're not being taught black history in your school because what you were taught in school was a lie. All right, you were taught that you was a, that you was a slave, that you're not going to be nothing, that you're going to have to be subject to the ghettos. That's all you're going to be in. Y'all have dreams of leaving the ghetto? Y'all like living here? What y'all like about this place? You say, you don't, why don't you like it here? Why not? Why don't you like it? Fake people. So what? Fake people. What, why do you like it here? I mean, we got a some places time. I do like, but some, some places I don't. What don't you like about living in this oh, neighborhood? Um, too, many, too, many, uh, too many people like, too many, uh, too many people that can't be trusted. As far as what? What happens in this neighborhood? Shootings. Shootings, what else? Fights, Fights drugs. Let me ask you this. Does that happen to everybody else in the neighborhood? That's just not a black man or a Hispanic? Does that happen in the so-called Asian man communities? Does that happen in the white man's communities? Does that happen in the East Indians? But why does it happen here? Why is it our people have to suffer? That's the question that y'all have to understand. Why do... I'm glad the sister asked, how do we know that God is back for sure? Hey, sis, you asked a good question. Now, anything we say, we're going to we're gonna prove with the Bible. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll read this for you real quick, all right? You want Christ or God? He Christ, he Christ. We're going to show you how we know that Jesus Christ is a black man, all right? This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes. Oh, say, give me revelation. Hey, sis, sis. Hey, sis, you asked a question. What's her name? I'm going to ask you a question real quick before you go, okay? okay. Revelation chapter 1. Remember, Revelation chapter 1 is where you're going to find the answer, okay? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It said his hair was white and woolly, all right? What nation of people have woolly hair? Black people. Black people, you know that. What, what's that on top of your head? Woolly hair, you too, you too, you too, you too, sis, right? So Jesus Christ has woolly hair, right? We're not gonna stop there, keep going. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. And his feet. Now, if, if y'all took off your socks, we can see the color of your feet, right? Now, is the color of your feet the same? No, 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 no. Is the color of your feet the same color as the rest of your body? For the most part, right? So Jesus Christ's feet was what? And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Oh, you know that. There you go. Let's go. As if they burn in a furnace. You take that brass and you burn it just like you burn anything. What color is it going to be? Brown. Dark, exactly. Black, brown, whatever you want to say. Jesus Christ is a dark-skinned man right. with woolly hair like you. Right. That's what you have to understand. So when you have your hair like this, this is beautiful. Don't go to these to these spots. Go put weave in your head. It don't look nothing like you. Don't go put the other nature's hair in your head. That's not your hair. 
You can grow your hair naturally. Natural is beautiful. Right. Wait, look, go to uh, go to Proverbs 3 and 31 real quick. I'm gonna show you something. This is what we've been taught. We've been taught that our hair was nasty and disgusting and, and, and nasty, right? That's what we're taught, right? Let me show you what God says about you. Go ahead. Proverbs 3, 31. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Envy not thy oppressor. It says, God, God says, envy thou not thy oppressor. Don't follow after the ways of these of these other nations because they hate you. All right. Now give me uh, hey sis. So far we went over some curses. Go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. I'm gonna read you one more, and we're gonna get into some laws. I'm glad you're listening, sis. Have you heard? Have you ever heard this before? You have when? Which church? Can you say it a little bit, little louder? They teach you that Jesus Christ is a black man and that you're an Israelite. Oh good, so they also teach that you shouldn't be dealing with the other nations? Oh good! What else, what else? I'm intrigued now, what else? I didn't come to this world to bring peace, I came with a sword. Me too. That means, you know, Oh, I told you, I studied for a while. Why you shouldn't I've been eating this shit up this list now. Right, okay, good, good. Now, I'm gonna read this last curse for you, sister, to let you know that you're an Israelite. And there's no, there's no confusion here, alright? Our people, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, fit these curses and we're Israelites. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now since you remember the story about Moses right how he led the children of Israel out of Egypt out of the hands of Pharaoh correct through the Red Sea. All right so now Moses is talking to the children of Israel in the wilderness. Now let's get Egypt. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 6. Hey sis come learn about your history come over here real quick I'm gonna show you something. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Remember, God said he brought us out of the land of Egypt. But what is Egypt known for? From the house of bondage. Egypt is described as bondage because that's what we served there. We were slaves in Egypt. Your ancestors in this Bible were slaves in Egypt, correct? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's get this sense. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Again, so God says he's going to take us back into Egypt. Now, Egypt means slavery. So he said he's going to take us back into captivity again. How? With ships. He said this time when we go, we're going to go on ships. Now, like you said, in school, what did you learn about your people? We were taken off of ships and what? Soul, correct? What the Bible say? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. He says, come over here. And there. Ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Now God says once you get off of these ships, you're going to be sold to your enemies, right? Now right here in Shaco Bottom, they got the little auction blocks on the street. That's where our people were sold. Do you know Richmond, Virginia was the second biggest hub for slavery in the United States of America? You understand that, right? That's Bible prophecy that just, that just, that just came to pass. Right. Keep going. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women slave men and slave women and no man shall buy you said, no man's gonna be able to redeem us because we had many people rising for our cause but it came to naught all right it didn't happen only person that's going to save us is jesus christ the black messiah when he comes back that's right what is the nation nation is men leading by example Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is.